Hello, 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 Ness. Dead night with Jesus. Oh, I like that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just waiting. I think I've got my guest here. Let me just invite her. Welcome if you're just joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello. Say my coaching. Hello, everyone joining us. I'm just waiting for my guests. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Hello, yes, yeah, sending you love, send you love. Hello, fair. Good evening, darling. How are you? Hello, Motorola. I just sent her an invitation. Hello, you're in school, my darling friend. I just love some people here. Eh? As you are backing me, God will back you. I'm sending you, I send you a request. In comments on the price of obedience. Tell me for talk where hello sis. Is that request be in your live view request? Okay, accept. Okay, hello request to join. I have accepted it. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll guess there. I'm accepting it is not coming through. I'm trying to think, is there something you might be doing on your site? Request to join. Lala, let me try again. Okay, accepts. Let me try and send you one, Lala. So hello everybody. Just welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. It's going to be an awesome session. So I've sent another one, Date Nights with Jesus, to you. Let's see if you can get it. We're going to have an awesome session tonight. Don't worry, technology is doing its own, but we know that God is here. He's saying Date Night with Jesus is, on a, is on a, unable to join. I'm not sure why that is the case. Okay. <laughs> You're on now. <laughs> Technology. Okay, you're on. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. Thank you. Hello. They got there. We 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 got Hello, 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 everybody. See my coaching. Hello, hello, everyone. Okay, hello, there's hello, Lou Jacobs. Okay, so we're gonna kick off, and you know, we believe people will join us as they go on. If you're joining us live, or if you're gonna watch afterwards, we're just saying thank you for joining us. Thank you for always being here on our platform. Thank you for Story Before Glory, where people have come to share their amazing stories and the name of God is glorified. So I'm welcoming Lola in a very excited. So Lola is a past guest. So one of the things we decided to do this year was to bring some old guests back. Please, if you have not heard Lola's story before, Hey, please, please go to YouTube after I was run there and go and hear Lola's previous story. She shared with us before, amazing story about how she encountered Jesus, how she met her husband, how she knew her children's names before she was even married. I'm telling you, it's the way you see people with um, all these young people, especially with their colored hair. No, uh, those assume that 
They're on fire. Don't judge your book by its cover. So, Lala, it's so lovely to have you back on again. Um, Thank um, you. So. Sorry, you know, when, when I reached out to Lola again and, you know, she said, Auntie, so listen to this. So, I think we reached out to her. Was it? Was it January? It was January. Mm -hmm. Please, people be listening, though, and I want to see comments. So I reached out to Lola in January. I was like, Lola, that, oh, you know, we're bringing some old guests back. Would you like to, you know, it would be nice to have you back. You know, your story was powerful and everything. Lola says, Auntie, hmm, I've been off social media and Instagram for three years. People listen, though. People li listen, listen. I said, eh, three years. She said yes. That it becomes it's, it gets to three years in August, and I'm thinking, ha. So we couldn't interview her, so we had to wait until August. And I'm going to allow her to share that with you. Why she decided, you know, not to come on for three years, and so Lola, tell us a bit about your yeah. So yes. Yes. So, so someone said, eh? yes, because, you know, as long as we're so hooked to this social media. So this is a young lady. This is, Lola is not, you know, if she was about 50, now say, okay, I understand why she doesn't, you know. So why, tell us a bit about yourself. Wait, wait, let, let me keep that. Let's, let's keep that. We're going to come there. Don't, don't let's jump. Tell us a bit about yourself, Lola. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, Nancy, <laughs> for having me back. Yes, Made is. it happen. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for what you do for this platform and for your to continue doing what you're doing. And um, thank you for having me again. Um, a bit about myself. Yeah, so I have been off social media for the past three years. Mm. Um, a lot has changed. When I, I um, left, they didn't have reels and all of that. My sister's like, what reels? Even the Instagram live, I was like, Auntie, how do I do it? I don't Can know. Can you imagine? <laughs> there was no reels when Lala left social media. So it, that's to give you an idea. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Yeah. Very different. But um, about myself, so the um, the last time I was on wow. as a guest oh. was in 2017. Time I had just uh, mm -hmm. I had my son the year before. Mm -hmm. I married in 2013. So much has changed since mm -hmm. the last time um, I was on. But I was 2017 was, was in the thick and throes of of like me running marriage ministry events and being all over social media mm -hmm. and being so active with my blog and I just looked. Back back at the YouTube clip you posted and I was just like, wow, I just remember being so involved with everything at that time. And um, it, mm. it's nice to look back, but yeah, a bit about me is I was heavily involved in marriage uh -huh. ministry in terms of running events, very social media, and, uh -huh. and I'm a mother, I have two boys now, and I'm currently working as a lecturer at Did university. you hear that? Lecturer at university. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, yes. I would say that that yes. is me. So thank you for that, Lola. So just just to give us a bit of a recap, so you were quite active on not just the social media. Yeah. You were having events, you had like a marriage ministry then, didn't you? You were doing prayers, didn't you? I remember there was a time you were doing prayers with women. Um you were you were not i think the picture i'm trying to paint with these people is that you were not a small girl in the social and in the ministry and i'm trying to paint a picture here and i have a reason for that so that when we begin to share what you had to do so we would have an understanding of the gravity of i remember one of your i can't remember if it was your prayers like how many people would you have and people reaching out to you about marriage about you know just give us a picture of how very busy you were before mm. yes with the blog i had about ten thousand followers and then every summer we would run um prayer and fasting yeah. so it's called the real husband list it's one of the books that 
that I had where it's like 30 days of prayer for your husband to be or your current husband, things should be praying into his life. And every summer, like people from ladies from all over the world who all connect on social media, we would fast in, do the prayers. We used to do like 3 a.m. prayers. So wherever you go, 3 a.m., we would join together online and pray. And I remember I used to, um, my son was like still a baby then. I'll be like, please in the middle of the night because live thing is going on in a minute and <laughs> but it was like very very active and we would do run events about sex about uh, mm-hmm. god's plan and desire for sex you know um, single and in marriage mm. and we used to do all of these it was yeah. so she was really really busy <laughs> yeah. you know so she had about ten thousand followers and lola used to talk about you know those topics that we don't talk about those topics that we always avoid those topics that we don't talk about you know maybe we're trying to avoid in church and all those places you know talking about sex i'm not even going to go to details there was one of our i remember a particular page in our book when i read it i was like ah ah lola you know boy it had to be <laughs> i'm sorry you know it was very graphic very detailed you know so she talks about those you know those topics we talk about we don't usually talk about as christians or in church which needs to be said you know because people need to know so from having ten thousand followers from being so active having whatever whatever lola what happened what happened what words did you hear what happened that made everything turn around three years ago yeah so um, it it kind of kicked off in 2019. Um, at it was around September 2019, and um, God told me, mm-hmm. "You need to slow down and um, take a, a year's break from social media." And I thought, "Okay, that's fine," because I've done, I've put myself on these kind of things before like um maybe yeah. one month or no social media but it's after a month when i get back i'll see all these messages in my dms like oh, mrs v is everything okay where are you da, 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 da. and um i think i just i felt like uh, god was just like you need to pause and i no biggie uh, i can i can do that you know one at this whole announcement on the book and um, i left it that but i didn't really understand uh-huh. what for it was just okay i'll do that, that no problem and um that was in september and then at the beginning of january 2020 god now said um uh-huh. that one year that i told you were three and um you're going to see it like a a university degree that there are things that you need to do you need uh-huh. to sit at my feet and come and learn before go back out and i remember thinking it was um just after new year's and i remember thinking (laughs) three years okay this this is this is a bit different and um i remember my pastor at the time um at my old church i remember he was on holiday for the new year break and i sent him an email i didn't really want to disturb him but i was just like this is what i'm hearing (laughs) from god are you hearing anything so please can someone just put to drop in the chat box (laughs) three years break from social media you heard god say three years break from social media please continue that this is a young person would you mind telling us your age about that time so i'm 36 okay. now so i was 33 then i got 25 so the ministry it started off with the blog and everything and by 26 27 i was in like full swing but at this point i'd had like almost like six years oh. of doing ministry and stuff and it was like full on proper full on so and i remember um that week we were just about to launch this oh. thing called life life wednesdays and like from everywhere I had bought like their resources and it's um we we're going to start doing these things where we meet virtually every Wednesday and start talking about wife life preparation for for marriage and you know uh, for people who are married to come and like let's discuss our issues and pray about them and all of that there was like a book that they had to um, get and read alongside it and it was all supposed to kick off on the Wednesday and it was like Sunday that God was like shut it down, shut it down, and shut it down, and not just on 
online but even like the events that I was doing he was like the only thing I want you to do is focus on one-to-one -one ministry so all those people who sign up for all your events and you know and you're you're always yeah, looking at yeah, oh how yeah. many people registered or all the numbers meeting with them individually over these three years and really wow. invest in in their lives and and forget the whole public persona of it all so I was just like yeah. okay and that's, that's well, what well, they should, <laughs> shut it down all your events go off social media for three years so this is one that had not two followers though. she mentioned over ten thousand followers shut it all down that's what god said please what what did you say because i think there was a time i heard god say something to me one time and the first thing my first reaction was get ye behind me satan and those who said no it's not satan it is me you heard me clearly you know what was your reaction when you heard that and how did things progress from that so my initial when it was the first when it was like okay take one year i was kind of calm like okay because growing uh, up god's asked me to do things before so um, in the in my uh, my last time on your show when i spoke about yeah. how god brought my husband and in that week of prayer and fasting and he gave me conditions like you know you, you shouldn't go to the club and i'm about to go to the club but little did i know that just within that next year so many of my friends would be getting yeah. married and that was the all their hen nights were in clubs I'd go to like any of my close friends like hen nights and celebrate with them in that way it was like he's asked me to do things before he's asked me to for a period of time to cut out all um secular music like to take it this was a was ipods <laughs> not iphone i don't know if anyone here remembers iPod. playlist you had to connect it to your computer to remove a song you couldn't just swipe left or whatever uh. so i've had i've done things before but the three year one that one was that's one that's when i reached out to, <laughs> to my pastor at that time like oh, is this really is this really know what god is saying <laughs> so um yeah it was um it was a bit of a shock i wasn't expecting that but one of the things he also said was um, um i'm going yeah. to do some things in your life some things um and you have to be obedient in this and one of the key things was you need to go and apologize to someone who you have offended and he told me the person and i thought i haven't spoken to this person for years i don't even have their number or anything but i mm -hmm. i found their email address and i sent the email about you know when we were teens i'm sorry for if i ever made you feel bad or whatever and um i just let god take take control from then that was literally all january wow. 2020. Wow. in addition to that what were the other things that god told you to do because it wasn't just about disconnecting from, the, from social media. And there's something you said, you said, God said, you know, you're going to, he's going to use the, those three years to be like you're going through you, mm. you know, training co yeah. college, you know. Yeah. What were some of the lessons? Because as you touched on some of those lessons, we're going to be expanding on them. And it's really about the power of obedience, even when it is absolutely mm. discomforting for you yeah definitely so god i think the way i could best describe it is from the beginning of 2020 till 2023 god mm. literally stripped away everything from me that mm. i thought made me who i am so um i would say growing up I've always been the, the uh, even as a child, I was always the one that like uh, didn't really do things wrong. Or even today, like my children were asking their grandma if I was the firstborn, because there are four of us, but I'm the second child. <laughs> and they were like, I thought I was the firstborn. And it's so because I've uh, always been like very responsible and that everyone can rely on that kind of thing. But I also think that at the same time, that makes you feel like yeah. you have to be perfect all the time and you have mm. to be forever responsible so that you know there's nothing wrong with you almost to the point that you 
you don't realize but you're doing things in a performative manner because of me this is what people will think when they think of Lola mm. this is what they would expect of her and they have to always behave and and that also spills into okay if I'm in ministry if I'm I was part of the um head of department for youth children's church mm. all of that stuff like mm. everyone is looking at Auntie Lola uh, I ran a for 20 years mm. I've run an education center so it's much like respect um, in terms of how I liaise with parents and children. And so all of those things I thought were the things yeah. that made me like so special. <laughs> and <literally, laughs> God, God kind of yeah. stripped those things. So away. apart from the education, so, so what were the things that God said shut down? So it was, you were, yeah. go on. So, yeah. So, 2020 uh -huh. it was social media military, all these events okay um 2021 he told us to leave the church that we had uh, been in and i had oh, wow. joined that church when i was 17 and at 34 and you know as i said i was like uh -huh. in the head of department for youth i was so most of the the parents and the children they all knew me like I had taught them for like 11 plus when they were 10 and now they're like some of them have finished uni or some of them are married now so there was that longevity of like um yeah. how people viewed me and that community and um like literally God was like you need to to come out of that and um he okay. also 2022 he told me oh. now my how business how long had the business for for, for over 20 years i'd had it for over 20 years and that's like all i've yeah. literally all i've ever known and you have to shut that down also. <laughs> so shut it down shut, so literally each year it was shutting things down and um even even um things that uh, had been previous uh, testimonies before so um in, in terms of like having my children i remember because um after we got married i was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome and that's when they said oh you're going to find it difficult to conceive and in our last um when i was last one a guest is when the story of uh, you know the angel and becoming mm -hmm. pregnant and you know all of that and like it's like going on to all of those things so even my testimonies or like my testimony of marriage were things that I held on to and and you know that that 2020 you know I discovered that like, um, my marriage isn't actually perfect or testimonies aren't um, fully perfect I remember thinking oh God had healed me of polycystic ovary syndrome and I remember that year when it was COVID um, I had all of this blood loss and the doctors could Explain it, and it turned out that I had menopause, and they had to do. They were saying that they would have to do a hysterectomy, that I would lose my womb, and that the cancerous polyps within my womb, and um, and then again, God just mysteriously, well, not mysteriously, wonderfully, cleared all of that. The the two, week before the operation, He showed me a vision of Him. Uh, like a builder working on all of those things in my womb and when I went for the operation when I asked oh has everything been cleared they were like there was nothing there to operate on it had all been cleared so he, he gave me new things to hold on to when I felt all of the other things that made me me uh, were uh. being taken away. I want away. you to because it's important we have one one, one question which I'm going to ask you to ask but I I want you to that story about what happened with you in hospital we're going to revisit that because i think that's really a powerful one so someone asked thank you for this if how did you find the courage to make these decisions at once and how did you feel when you implemented them so for me it's like each of those each of those i don't want to call them requests because they're not really requests from god they're more like you know which, which of those commands from god basically 
you know, and I think that's it. How did you make those decisions and how did you feel when you implemented them? So that's the first question. Okay, so I want to be 100% honest and say that I felt yep. not happy. <laughs> and I'm not here mm -hmm. and be like, yeah, you know, I just obediently did everything. And I know like it's called mm -hmm. the price of obedience. There was a price to pay. There was um you know i i can understand why sometimes people who are on social media who have what how it can like get to their head and uh, i can understand how after i stepped out of everything i could see how i probably uh. was a bit prideful um, i can see how you know sometimes when i look i don't even have access to i don't even know how to that's my old instagram account and maybe that's for a good reason <laughs> because everything is like fully deleted you can't even revamp it and i remember at the time thinking i'm gonna lose like all those followers and you know but god will, wh whatever is meant to be god will do it anyway but it was very difficult it was very difficult to let go of um all of those things one of the other things he, he asked me to do in 2021 was to remove myself from um wow. a group of friends as well that had been like four friends that i mm -hmm. thought were literally my world and that was so difficult so there was it wasn't um okay god you said this i'll do this 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 there was a lot of uh pulling and back and forth with him but um but he's so good because mm. with everything he will confirm exactly mm -hmm. what i'm asking you to do and i think one of the things i mentioned to you before was my mom is such mm. a powerful force in my life what is almost like whatever she says that is like god's word and she's the person who introduced me to like the education industry and that's what my business was built upon and so when god was saying you need to shut it down i remember even my mom being like you like, what? You got to shut this down this thing that you've built up like <laughs> all this and i remember being like but I believe, I believe that's what God is saying. And I'll be like, God, please just confirm, just reconfirm. Please, like, uh, just please let me know this is the right thing that you're, you're asking me to do. And I remember one particular Sunday, my mom had come to church with me and we had a guest pastor from Brazil and he was talking about, you know, God has asked me to do something and you need to do it. And um, I was like, okay, yes, that's God's confirmation. And then later that same day, my mum was with me and she said, oh, look, there's a, a child. Let's give them, you know, cards for your, your company. And I was like, no, like, you know, we're, we're closing it. And she's like, so you want to close it? It sounds like a wall. It really sounds like I'm not sure if it is on my voice or something. It really sounds like a wall. Sorry. It was that contention between yeah. use your head like yeah. like she's speaking sense you know I'm sure this is what god is saying and god is so so good because the very next day um one of my students um so during the pandemic we were able oh. to go online so we had international students and one of the students was a french girl um studying a levels and she had finished her exam so um her mom called me and i was wondering why you know because like we finished with her now and and she I picked up the phone, I was in the car, so it was on speakerphone. And she just said, um, oh, everything is fine. I just wanted to just tell you something and I hope you won't be offended. You know, I don't know if you believe in God or not, mm. but um, I have a message for you. And it is, you need mm. to shut down your business and focus on your children. And my mum was in the seat listening to everything. And I was just like, you have no idea she was like yeah. apologizing because we have a professional relationship she's never i was like don't apologize you don't you don't even understand what 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 you've done today so, so god it wasn't, brought um, someone from outside was, to confirm what he had been telling you yeah. and because you knew the amount of influence your mom had on you he made sure that she was also present in the car to hear from a total stranger what he has been telling you you see how this our god is Definitely, wow. definitely, because there was inner turmoil of, okay, but this voice is also so strong. <laughs> you, you know, I was just thinking about yeah. this, you know, with God, 
some of the instructions we get are not going to make any sense you know please yeah. tap in the chat yeah. you know with god it might not make sense and i think that's the important mm -hmm. for me that's like the key message from tonight in terms of all the things you've got you had to give up so if you if there was if this is a business of about 20 years so you probably started that business was at the age of 16 so we can understand the gravity of you asking yeah. to just opt out you've built that business you know you were well known for the level and the standard of education that you give you were well known for the 11 plus you had international um client base i'm just painting the picture so when you are still saying to go and close it down it's not more and more to just go and close it down like that and so we can understand where your mom was coming from even if somebody that like are you sure are you sure yeah balance you know everything is okay you know are you sure you heard from god so you know <laughs> you know the, the ability to be yeah. able to do some things that god asks us to do you know uh, it's, it's it, it really isn't you know it, it's it's not easy but when you when you have i always say when you have coin money when you have intimacy when you know god like i was saying to you what the, you know i was sharing that that was the time i heard from god and i said get you behind me so there was a particular you know, you know this is where you know we were hope we were trying to get a, a church building in church and you know um you know we were asking you know the church had a particular amount and we wanted to raise funds you know and for me i don't have problems with things like that when you love god you don't struggle giving him of your substance so but i was i was in between jobs then that was quite quite a few years ago you know and um i, I remember so i was in between jobs then and i said oh, lord you know me oh, you know when it's like asked to do we give you things i don't have a problem but you know at this moment i'm not working so there's not really much i can give and everything so, so, so. so that day, i remember clearly i was vacuuming and i heard but you have gold i said gold yeah. said, eh, you have gold you can give you know there's a, i said get ye behind me satan that must be the devil you know so what am i saying you know there's there's so many and, and for me it's a, an attestment and you're showing of truly do you love god by word of mouth or do you love god with your actions you know it's in our obedience that we can really see that to we truly truly love god someone put character building i totally agree what would you what were the character building traits you know that you got from your journey hmm. so many <laughs> so when god said it would literally be like a degree a university degree at the time i, I thought okay bring it on i don't mind studying but i had no idea the the level of learning that i would go through and there's a scripture in the Bible that says something like something like um if you, you mm. think you have wisdom get more wisdom like i i back in 2019 i thought i knew it all i thought that there's literally I'm not even being fed spiritually anymore. Like, you know, oh, wow. I'm, I feel like I'm at the top of everything. And oh, that God. prideful place to be in, especially if God's called you to minister to others or to lead others in any way. And, and, I, and at the time, I didn't see it as like, oh, I'm being, it just felt like a fact. Like, I don't feel like I'm spiritually being fed. And in terms terms of like what they expect of me in terms of being a good christian i can tick all those boxes what people in terms of being a good wife i can perfect tick all those boxes because perfect I, well, my perfect like even down to like how i raised my children like my son josiah the first one was you know i really worked with him he was reading at age two he's like um, like you know all amazing academically and i thought that was all down to me because you know oh and you know my second son it took him until age four to really like nail this thing so you know all the things that i really took pride in got like nope 
taking that away. This second son, oh, he's gonna he's not gonna read as fast as the wow. first one because I'm gonna let you know that it's not you, you know. And so all the things that I felt really uh made me special, God took it away. And one of the funniest things was when we moved to our new church, I remember thinking, okay, I'm going to um, you know, get my get back in here and offer free GCSE English to the youth you know, and like get involved <laughs> and like nobody took it up I was like but it's free <laughs> nobody was like they were like oh no we're good thanks you know and only, only to find out that the youth leader that's what he studied at university mm -hmm. English literature anyway <laughs> well I stopped trying to use the things that you think make uh, you special uh, uh. to be special because and out of those things without yeah. all of those things with just me and, and and one of the things that God highlighted was you know even when I asked you to go into ministry there was never ever a, a mandate yeah. of today's the day like this is the time you know I just took it upon myself to say wow. okay I will start now and just you know doing these things and one of the things one of the scriptures that I I remember reading this year was um the story of when jesus yeah. had fed the five thousand uh he went off to go and pray and uh -huh. the disciples were waiting for him into the boat and you know jesus yeah. was taking a long time so they just went anyway and that's when they had the storm and you know they saw jesus walking on water and they thought it was a ghost and all of that but one of the key things once Jesus stepped into the boat, it says, you know, everything stopped and they yes. immediately arrived at their destination. And 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 that made me feel like, Lola, like God mm -hmm. never said, okay, now go. Like, did you do come into the boat with you before you did the whole ministry and all of that? And yes, because of grace, I know that people were blessed yeah. by it, but that's because of grace. And just like disciples, if they if they had waited then we would yeah. never know the story of Jesus walking on water because he had to walk on water if he was in the boat with them. So God does give grace and miracles and testimonies yeah. do still come out of it. But for it to be filled yeah. without the storm, for you to, you know, to minister to people's lives the way that God wants it to be without yeah. the hassle, without the stress, without the storm, when you're doing it on your own, then just wait for him to lead you. And so you know when you when you said in january that oh you know <laughs> we're looking at revisiting some stories and i was like it came to a point where i was like <laughs> i don't even know if i'm going back and that's what happens when god strips you when he deals with you mm -hmm. it came to a point where he stripped me of the uh, desire to uh -huh. even want to be on it and one of the things i've learned is if it's business or if it's, you know, self-development, you have to be proactive, you know, you have to go to networking events and engage yourself and, you know, ask for speaking engagements to put yourself forward. But ministry isn't about putting yourself forward, it's about being called. And before I used to be like, oh, I would like to, you know, come and speak to your da 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 da, -da you know, mm -hmm. in a little advertisement for myself or oh, the ministry was called mrsbrasari.com. Why? Why is it named after you? You know, it's like, on what led you to that what led me to the moments of of prayer and all that i spent late nights with jesus that's what i did that's in intimacy with christ and learning from him and sitting at his feet as he instructed me to do so all of those things were you know god was showing me that it's not about right. you seeking it's about me calling you God's so that's not so, about you I yeah. it's about me it's calling about me. we should stop seeking we should stop seeking for interviews stop seeking to be called and speak somewhere let them call yeah. me That's what i was doing that i was doing the right thing in doing that and you know so when you, you by the time you called i god mm. had stripped me of even the desire to want to be out there and it was now the battle was god i don't want to go back in fact I don't even want it. That the thing, the only thing. That's going to make you, you, you know what I'm laughing, Lola? Sorry. You know, you know when God has dealt with someone, you won't even want to come anymore. 
<laughs> what do you want to come you like just leave me here you know when god has really dealt yes. with you dealt with your character dealt with your pride yes. dealt with everything that you feel that you know every self glory feel glorifying you know you would just just leave me here god please just let me just stay here in my yeah, that that is it I just, just like, God, I'm just happy. Like, whichever way you want this ministry to happen, I know you'll do it somehow, but I'm not going back. I don't, I don't even want it. Like, when my sister was telling me about reels and all this, I was like, I don't even know about it. I don't, I don't even want it. The only thing I'm coming back is if you just do one of those huge things to say, this is it, and I will know. So, you know, even in January, when your sister was trying to nail down the date, you know, I was telling you before that I was even angry, like, oh, why is she on my case about the date? I don't even know if I'm doing this. <laughs> you know? And um, literally last month, one of my friends from my old church just messaged me. I haven't uh -huh. seen her since 20, probably 2018. Or nineteen, definitely before the pandemic. And she messaged me about this ministry that she's holding and she's hosting it and she me to come and I knew that I wasn't going to go but I thought let me just support her so I bought a ticket just to like sew into her ministry and um, the next day I happened to be in London and the night before she had messaged to say oh looking forward to seeing you tomorrow because she saw that I had bought a ticket and I didn't reply until today I still haven't replied because I know I'm going to go but I just um. thought I'll pray for her and it will go well how but it changed from me going to london and saying yeah. okay i will go but i'll just go for an hour and and the event was from 11 to 6 30. i got there at 11 and wow. i stayed until 6 30. at that event there was a guest minister and she was praying and then she stopped and she looked at me and she said you have been hiding and you yeah. You are a firecracker mm -hmm. in the spirit you've been hiding. I've been telling you, your mm -hmm. time is now, your time is now, and you've been hiding. You need to get out. And mm -hmm. I was just crying. <laughs> like, okay, Jesus. Okay, Lord. But only because mm -hmm. you have now said, so I'm, okay. I'm ready. I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, yes. so thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yes, have to be and I don't want to say a solution. After God has been cooking you and taking you through uni all over again, then he brought it to story before glory for the first yeah. time. Before you go, one of the one of the things you also went through when God was taking you through the university. Some of us here, yeah, God is going to take us through university. Please be careful <laughs> because you join. So, so, so when God was taking you through that university and going through all the courses that you went through in the university, another one was the power of healing. And you know one thing that I, I know that God, you see, when God wants to take us through university, he's going to touch every main aspect of our lives. So it will, it will, it would all go towards character building your finances will be touched you know it would strip that to see what you can do if you don't have that your health will be touched on to see what you can do if we and it's almost like the story of job where god says okay let me just allow you know and let me see you know is our love for for him with our commitment for me is it based on when things are looking rosy or when, or when we don't have challenges. Yeah. What was what happened with your health? I know you touched on it, but I wanted to just take time because there's a powerful testimony in that that I want you to just go through yeah. with us. So again, this is my pride. Pride. <laughs> I know it can be so subtle. You won't even know. You won't even know. You'll just be thinking, hey, well, I can do this. I can do I I when you see that I I come in, I I yeah definitely so i remember it was my that must have been 33rd or 34th birthday when they announced lockdown in the uk it was the 23rd of march and i remember i was um at my old church whenever it was your birthday that week you would go to the front and uh, stand at the front and receive prayers and every year the main thing you'll be planning is what outfit am i wearing <laughs> If you can relate like, to that, so, type it in the comments. You know what she's talking about. 
what outfit my shoes i remember when i did my 52 i was matching my top with my shoes with the stones on it and my earrings let's be honest let's be honest let's be honest don't just lie let's be honest yes go on okay this is the outfit i'm going to wear when i go up on sunday um my nails i used to do um uh you know um what's that thing um, my lashes, eyebrows, you know, all of that. And um, I remember my husband saying, I was telling him my plans, and he was like, hmm, the way it sounds is like, you know, lock all these things down, like shops might shut down. Are you sure you want to go and do your nails? How will you take it off if everything is, you know? And I thought, okay, all right, let me just not do that. And true, truth be told, on my birthday is when they announced lockdown. So there was no going to church to stand in front of everyone and all of that, uh, that stuff like it just didn't happen and it's a, a proper time of like true reflection as to you know what things do you really really care about like what is not yeah. to say that doing nails and thing is bad because like, we, we take care of how we look uh, and our appearance uh, but what things do you really dedicate your time to? you know i mentioned and all the things I was doing with ministry and with the business and raising two young children, there's 20 months between my boys. So it was like, you know, so full on. And with that, I would still find time every three weeks on rotation, lashes, nails, nails, like, you know, and <laughs> God just shut, you know, all of that down. And it's like on the, and on that same day, my period came. And for me, whenever my period comes, it's, it's like a, okay i need to note it yeah. down because of the polycystic ovary syndrome and it was i just felt it was significant yeah. that my period came on my birthday and they announced that like, things are shutting down and that period did not stop until may every single day it was blood flow blood flow and so heavy and because everything was shut down we couldn't go yeah. to the doctors we couldn't do anything at any point that i was literally wearing oh like nappies like old wear because the blood flow was so intense and at the same time i was running free sessions for all the children who uh were off school because of lockdown so it's like god used my gift of education but rather than using it for business and to mm. make money you're going to use it to bless people blessing people my body felt like it was depleting to the point that i had so much blood and i fainted at home so the ambulance had to come and take me and because of lockdown no one can go with you so my husband couldn't come with me um he had to drop a suitcase at the hospital downstairs and the nurse will come and take it up and you know they kept asking me when they checked oh do you do you have children do you are you planning on having any more children i kept asking you know why are they asking me and after they had done the scans is when they found out that I had gone into at age 34 or whatever I was, um, pre menopause, yeah, and wow. um, and I had cancerous polyps in my womb, and so they do do a hysterectomy and move everything. And that oh, they they also said oh, wow. I'd lost like a third of my blood supply, so they had a blood transfusion. So you know, it was just all of this going on but in everything god was like at the beginning of the year i need you to be obedient in some things because i'm going to do some things in your mm -hmm. life over this period while you're in mm -hmm. and yeah. all the glory yeah. is going to go to him That's exactly what he did when he when they went to go and do the operation there was nothing to operate they made me sign a form to set to, to that i too have seen the scan the before and after scan before i go and sue the hospital or something to say they didn't really do it but you know it was literally just oh god he just all the things that i felt i was holding on to that yeah. oh god gave me a husband or god gave me a child he was like yeah. that's not it that's not the that's not your your story just because i did something great in your life doesn't mean that's it you know and and one of the things i said to you is thank you so much uh -huh. for doing the revisiting because you know, we do story before glory and we tell the testimony but stories still are ongoing probably have watched that thing and 
I thought, oh, Mrs. Bean, that she has a perfect. husband and she has Thanks. a child, and like her life is so not in what's coming around the corner. <laughs> you know. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, yeah. for yeah. sharing your um story and and um one thing i kept on hearing over and over again is pride 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 the spirit of pride um so i'm just looking at some of the comments. god is god if you glorify yourself in me i will never cease to proclaim your faithfulness and goodness to the whole world yes so we just want to thank god if you were to your story in the last three years if you were to speak to someone on now um what would you say to them in terms of where you've been and your journey and everything that you've gone through as we begin to surround up i know you also talked about you know your friendship that's another thing i was going to say another thing that would usually come when you're on a journey with god is you know there will be isolation you know and that is at that point where there's isolation that you really get to sit down at his feet and really, really get to know him. So what would you say to someone? And that, no, before you answer that one, what was the period of isolation? What was that like for you? Yeah, that was so difficult. That was challenging because that was, you know, from the age age of 18 19 that had been like my core group and i understand fully why god said i should isolate myself but it was very difficult and i remember you know at one point just going into my husband's office and, and falling on the floor and being like i have no friends this i have like no friends anymore like the things that i thought really made me like that God is saying and you know it was a bit of like tug tug of war and I think the the final nail in the coffin was God said to me if you do not separate from them you will no longer hear my voice and that was like like forget tug of war that was like okay take the rope because if there's one thing that I just could not go through this whole world with is not hearing god's voice like i would not i wouldn't even know what mm. what what's the point of everything i can't hear from him and and follow what he's asking mm. me to do in every area of my life it's not to mm. say that it's, it's like good versus evil it's like you said sometimes god just needs to isolate you maybe for a period of time maybe forever but i i know this the person that i was in that and the person that i am outside of that and i know i am now is definitely on route to who god wants to be in terms of being obedient and and sometimes how i was then and i'm just like god it's by your grace it's only by your grace that you even answered some of my prayers you know so it it was a very difficult time but also a very wonderful time and and advice that i would give to someone is when it comes to friendships relationships or you know whatever just really mm -hmm. ask god for the spirit of discernment and the, uh, 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 um, uh, a heart that's seeking what god wants for you because we can't just um choose people based mm. on if they tick certain boxes you can't choose people based on, okay this is going to be my husband or this is going to be my best friend because they're black mm. or because they go to church mm. or because they cry or because they, they say because i can tell you now that i know pastors and ministers who are so mean and horrible mm. to people in their own congregation and ministers today so the title doesn't mean anything but the character of the heart is is what really speaks to who you want to who you want your heart to be tied to or or combined with and I think sometimes if God is just saying for now or forever, I need to be here so I can speak to you and show you where I need you to go, then don't, uh, you don't even need to waste time doing the back and forth. <laughs> just do it yeah. because God wins anyway. So just get on with his plan. But it, it, it is difficult, but it is all the best times to 
to really get to know him again and to have date nights with him like really focus on his word and what he's saying and you know he gives you new revelations and you know that's that that scripture about you can't put mm -hmm. new wine in old wine skin yeah like you know there's 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 a story before glory and there's story again and there's glory because god is like everlasting and he's always worked on us so um yeah i think that's advice that i would give <laughs> very deep very very yeah. deep so just there was a question from flicky's world can i ask what god is having you do now good question okay so yes so now god has released me to start date nights with jesus i'm still asking him direction as to how exactly he wants it to be um it will be a blog and a podcast but other than that beyond that i don't know what he wants to do and i'm literally at the point now of uh okay god this is what you're saying okay this is what i would do as opposed to before when i was like oh this would be a nice thing to post <laughs> why i make food for my husband hashtag why you know all of that stuff that's more driven mm. by my design i wanted to as opposed to what I, I know god wants me to show but the ultimate ultimate bottom line is for god to use me to help other women connect with him mm. on a deeper level that is that is the end goal of, of everything so thank you so much for sharing with us that's what you just said now is what i call the true identity um so i i did a session on friday i ran a program on friday and we were talking about you know self-identity knowing yourself and i think that you know we associate mm -hmm. our identity with our careers with our businesses you know with all those, you know, worldly things, you know, but your true identity lies in your purpose, the many assignments that mm -hmm. come with your purpose. And for me, what you've just, you've been on a journey. <laughs> so we mentioned about seven stages of your identity. So you, 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 you're on seven, is that like you're evolving? So you're like on seven, on the seventh level for one, and then another phase will start. And then your journey of self-discovery, mm -hmm. Um, self-awareness, self-exploration, self-understanding, self-discovery would happen. And thank you so much. Um, there's so much thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. This is true. Thank you for sharing your your story. Very, very inspiring. Absolutely. You know, thank you so much, Allah, for your time. Um, when Lola and I, before we came on, so what I would normally do is 10 minutes before we come on, I would um, call my my guest and we will pray together and you know lola prayed i prayed in it first and then she prayed for me and she just prayed a heartfelt prayer that really touched you know when you have like four things that is on the focus of your mind you know it was like she picked the four things that's been on my mind like in the last <laughs> one week and she almost brought me to tears and you know the holy spirit was saying to me there's that um i think that one of our guests has said before that there's no junior holy spirit you know so so don't you know I, i'm one that never think oh maybe because someone is younger than me you know they might not speak into my life or they might not you know deposit something into my life i value my relationship on all levels whether older or younger so where am I going to? I just feel a leading for um, Lola to just pray with us as we round up and pray for one or two people that might be on here now or are going to watch later that they're in that journey of self-mastery. So they're walking through the journey of self-awareness. They're discovering pain. They're having to do the math. They, they used to be a matter. They're now having to be doing Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus or they're in pain or they're going through something to do with their health. From what you shared, you probably were um, bleeding for almost three months. Was that about right from about, yeah. Mm. So, so for me, you've been through so much in three years. I just want you to just share a word of prayer as led by the Holy Spirit to you. And if you feel that Lola said something or whatever, just receive whatever it is that the Lord is going to use her to just minister to us. I only go as led by the Holy Spirit when we're on here. So please, Lola, over to you. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence in this place right now. Thank you for being so powerful, so wonderful, not limited by time or walls. Thank you, Jesus, as we are meeting here virtually. It's just us all tapping into your spirit, Lord. When we all get to heaven one day, it will be like mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. That prayers are like Wi-Fi. We're all you and connected to each other and i pray lord jesus that you will meet the desires of each and every one of your children here today i thank you for the gift of your love i thank you for the gift of your grace i pray that your grace and your joy will be in the hearts of every single person everyone who is praying to just get one step closer to you lord no matter what that looks like in their lives i pray that you will show them how to it. I know that a lot of our desires are to be close to you, to be intimate with you, but sometimes we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to pray for healing, or we don't know how to pray for our husband, or we don't know how to pray for our children, or we don't know how to pray for direction. But Father, you, you said that your Holy Spirit will be given to us as a gift, as a comforter, as a speak and to work on our behalf. So we engage in the Holy Spirit today, and we pray that you will just give us direction. You will give and you will give us the learning that we need to engage with and we pray for strength and grace for each and every one of us here tonight to be able to actually engage it properly the way that you want us to i also mm -hmm. pray against every form of distraction every tension everything that seems like it wants to take away from the core of where you want our hearts to be no matter how difficult it is for us to maybe separate mm -hmm. from those things father give us the strength to do it give us the gift of free will will lord we pray that you will strengthen our will so that we will choose right in you that will not be um, led astray by the voices of others that will not be um hit yeah. by the serpentine spirit lord but that the spirit to conquer your words we will step on the on the head of the snake lord every serpent everything that is disguised as goodness we pray that you will reveal it to us so that we know everything that comes as evil we pray that their masks will slip so that we know and we are aware we pray that you will give us strength lord to go forward and to do the works that you've called us to do and that our hearts will be yearning for you lord that the the the, the desires that we have for you will weigh and overcome everything that is around us everything that uh, serves as a form of distraction or busyness or things that we think we need everything that we feel are our tools and bricks to, to build the world around us that we feel make us who we are mm -hmm. lord we ask you to just dismantle them lord and show who we are in you we pray that our identity in you will be built with the bricks of the hope with the words of your of your with the the truth of your word and with the gifts that you've given onto us that we will use them in the way that you've called us to use them that will give you glory father we just thank you for this time and i thank you for all of the things that um, all of the promises that are in your word let us engage with them and let us apply them to our lives successfully in jesus name Father, I just thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. I thank you for everyone who yeah. took the time to even come and meet here today. Thank you for those who are going to watch this after. Let them all be touched by your spirit. And even if it's not a, um, a full uh, conversion or a full, full uh, feeling the full force of your spirit, but just, just sweet, small voice, Lord, anything to let them know that it is you, that you are there, that they can see you, that they can seek you, that they can know that you will answer them, Lord. Let them feel that. Let them, do not let um, the glory go to anything else. Do not let lives take, take what belongs to you, Lord. Show yourself mightily in their lives in, in the way that they will know that's personal to them, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are so grateful. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lana. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. So lovely to have you back here, Lana. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry if you're just joining us. We're about to round up. Thank you, everyone. Amazing, amazing. And we will see you next month with another amazing guest. So thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Lola. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I don't know if your mom was here. You know, I, I always want to acknowledge women that bring that bring up such amazing children. I love, I love, I love, I love your mom. Thank you for amazing children, powerful woman. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.